Hey guys, Scott from Fright Props here, and today we're going to be taking a look at our Aim the Laser Escape Room Puzzle. First thing, we're just going to kind of take a look at the components, show you what we're using here. Uh, we're using a flex controller, we have a 130 pound magnetic lock, we have a laser sensor, we have our laser, a push button trigger, and a single relay board. The reason we're using a flex controller here is so that we can have a trigger which when pressed will turn the laser on. You can see that the laser is currently off. Um, and then using the flex we can have our trigger activate the laser which in turn will activate our sensor which will open our lock. So the flex controller is programmed by a software called Director and I'm going to be taking a look at Director a little bit later. We're going to go through the program and show you exactly how we have it set up to create this prop. Uh, the flex controller has solid state outputs. That means that they send voltage out of the outputs to the attached components. We're using a 12 volt power supply here. So that means that uh, once the uh, flex is powered on, it's sending 12 volts out of the outputs. So that means our lock is locked. That's a 12 volt lock. That's also why we're using the relay here. Because the laser we're using is a 5 volt laser, we can't attach it directly to the output of the flex. It would send 12 volts to the laser and burn it out. So we're using a relay here, which is 12 volt. When this relay receives power from the flex, it's going to connect the two terminals at the top here that we have our power, our five volt power from our laser routed into, and it's gonna to touch them together, completing the circuit, allowing the five volt power to flow through and turn on the laser. For this demonstration, we have our trigger connected to input one on the flex, and the laser sensor connected to input two. This controller has two inputs, which allows us to do this type of puzzle. So let's go ahead and demo it and show how it works. In this scenario, the players would have to uh, find the button, or it could be any other trigger. It could be a step mat, it could be a motion sensor, or a beam sensor, or any of our triggers. But in this case, we're just going to use a button. So once the button is pressed, the laser will turn on. You can see the laser's on now. Then the players have to shine the laser at the laser sensor, which will open the lock. And currently, we have the lock programmed to stay open for 10 seconds, and then it will lock again. And there it goes. So it's a fairly simple puzzle, but using the flex allows us to determine how long the lock stays open for. It also allows us to attach a trigger, which turns the laser on, so that the laser doesn't have to stay on uh, for the entire duration of your game. It can be activated by a controller or even, say, a key that's hidden in a previous puzzle in order to slow progress through the game. So that is a look at the actual physical components. The one other thing we want to look at is the director programming that allowed us to do this. So we're going to move over to the computer. I'm going to walk you through the director program uh, and show you how to set it up for a puzzle like this. Okay, so here we are in Director. Um, you can see we've just opened Director. This is a screen that you'll first see when you open up the program. And we have a few shows here in our recent shows. Um, we can also go to My Shows and it'll give us a list of all the shows we have on this computer. I have a few of the different demo ones I've created here. We're gonna wanna open this one called Aim the Laser Show. And if you order this prop, we're gonna put a version of this show on the SD card so that you can open it with your copy of Director and edit it yourself to fit the specific needs of your application. So we're going to go ahead and select Aim the Laser Show and open it up. And here we are at the show. Now, if you're new to Director, uh, you'll see that we have our controller listed over here on the left. That's the Flex controller. You can see I have already labeled our um, two outputs, one for the laser, one for the maglock, so we know which one those are so we can turn them on and off in our timeline. We have two trigger inputs, which we can look at up at the top here under Scene. You'll see we have three scenes. We have the ambient scene. That's a 30 second long scene and it has the mag lock on for the entire scene. Now what that is, is that's the scene that's just playing whenever the box is powered up. So what we've essentially done is created a scene where the lock is always on. And we've used our scene settings. If you go over here to the little gear and click it, you can open up your show settings and your scene settings. We're gonna go to our scene settings and you can see uh, we have enabled input number one. It's important that we have this checked. We've had the uh, both boxes checked for it being interruptible by a trigger attached to either input one or input two. That means that the ambient show can be disrupted either by the laser sensor being detected or by the uh, attached trigger being uh, activated. And the last most important thing is this after scene go to function. 
So this is what happens when the scene ends. After the 30 seconds play out in our timeline here, we want this scene to go to this scene again. So it's essentially repeating over and over again. It's just keeping the lock shut over and over and over again. And that after scene go to is pretty important for a lot of different effects that you might be using with a flex controller. So again, if you're new to Director, you can see that we have a timeline here. I've put it at about 30 seconds. And when the um, blue is filled in, that means that that output is on. So we have the output which the mag lock is attached to on for all 30 seconds. And uh, that means that the lock is powered, which means it's closed. So our ambient show here is just the lock being closed, repeating over and over again, so that the lock will be locked whenever the unit is powered on. Now, for input one, and input one is the trigger input, as we showed earlier. So when input one is activated, when somebody presses that button, steps on that pad, uh, passes the motion sensor, whatever it might be, we're going to have both inputs on. So the mag lock stays locked, but the laser input now turns on as well. So you can see both are totally filled in with blue here, meaning they're both active. Uh, again, we set this for 30 seconds. We've disabled input one because we don't want it to keep triggering over and over again. We don't want them to be able to keep hitting the button one and somehow mess up the show. So we've disabled input one uh, during this show. We've had it interruptible by input two, which is our laser sensor, meaning that if somebody triggers input two while this show is running, it's going to play our next scene, the scene associated with input two, which is our laser sensor. Again, our after scene go to. What happens when this scene ends? Well, we want it to just loop over and over again. So it's going to the same show, input one, zero. So that's what's happening once you hit the button. It's just playing this show on repeat over and over again. Laser is on, maglock is on, waiting for an input from your trigger number two. If we go up to our scene here, we can go down to scene number two. And this scene is actually our success, our solution. You'll notice that it's totally empty. That's because we want both off. We want the laser to turn off and the maglock to turn off. We want the laser off, we want the maglock to open. In our demo here, I've set it for 10 seconds for the purpose of the video, but you can change the length by simply dragging this record line out to however long you want your maglock to stay open. If you want it to be longer, if you want it to stay open for minutes, you can zoom out and you see the timeline gets longer and longer. You can go out to five minutes. You can go all the way out to about 30 minutes. If you want it to stay open for a longer time than that, you're going to have to create another show. But we'll get to that in a second. So basically, we're just going to tell it how long we want the mag lock to stay open. We're going to go out to 35, uh, let's say we go to 35 minutes. If we were to save and export this program, the mag lock, when this puzzle was solved, would stay open for 35 minutes. Now in this show, um, you can see that we have disabled all the inputs. So it's not interruptible. It, this is just what's going to happen for as long as this show plays. Um, we have our after scene go to to be the ambient scene. So it will go back to our ambient scene, which is our repeating maglock being powered on. Now, again, if you wanted to have a longer duration, let's say you wanted this lock to be open for 60 minutes uh, once the puzzle is solved, all you would do was bring this to 30 minutes you're going to need to create a new scene so you would go up to scene you would click manage scenes we would go down to input 2 we would add one below and now we have input 2-1 we would hit OK then we can go to uh, input 2-1 we can go ahead and drag this out we'll zoom out so we can get uh, the amount of time that we're looking for and we can drag this all the way out to 30 minutes and just leave it like that. So, so now we can go back to input 2-0, look at our after scene go to, which originally was ambient next scene. We can change that now to go to input 2-1 so that once the um, scene plays out its 30 minutes, it's going to uh, automatically go to the next scene, input 2-1, for another 30 minutes of being open for a total of 60 minutes. So if you need longer times, that's how you get to them. Uh, you can leave all this the same and just have the after scene go to for your 2-1 be the ambient scene so that it will go back to the start, um, back to that kind of default status. Okay, so that is how we have the show set up here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to manage scenes. We're going to delete this scene. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. We're going to go to our scene input 2. 
dash zero, and we're going to move it back down uh, to just a few seconds long so that we have it kind of for testing and uh, demo purposes. Now, when you're all done, you can save your show or, um, just by clicking save, and you can export. So you would just click your export button. Uh, it will, uh, you want to choose run from the SD card, export to your SD card, eject it from your computer, put it in your flex, and you're good to go. All right, so that is a quick view of uh, the Aim the Laser puzzle along with just a real quick walkthrough of the director software being used with the Flex to create that puzzle. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment on this video or send us an email at sales at frypuffs.com. Thanks.